Do you want to know my tips and tricks for healthy, vibrant looking skin and learn what to watch out for when choosing your cosmetics? Yes? Well, then stay tuned for today's show. Hi, my name is Biggie Fraley and I'm the arthritis coach. Welcome to today's show about skin health. And you've probably heard the expression, you are what you eat, right? Well, your skin is no exception. You see, our skin is our largest organ. It's basically a protective covering and first line of defense against illness and disease. Now, you may also know that it is a direct passageway to our bloodstream. So with that being said, what you apply topically on your skin as well as what you eat will directly affect your overall, overall health as well as the appearance of your skin. So what can you do to ensure your skin stays young and vibrant? Well, let's start from the inside out. First off, we need to hydrate the skin. That means drinking plenty of water. Yep, you need at least the recommended six to eight glasses a day. However, if you are physically active, live in a warm climate, or simply feel thirsty, you may need to increase your daily intake. Also, did you know that as we age, the skin actually tends to become dehydrated a lot more quickly? which is what causes it to wrinkle. So ample hydration is definitely the key here. Number two, you've heard me say it before. Eat your superfoods. You're doing that already, right? Good. Because it's not only good for your health, it's good for your skin as well. Let me give you some examples of those superfoods. Number one, omega-3 fatty acids, which are not only found in fatty fish, such as herring, sardines, and salmon, but also in plant-based sources like flax seeds and walnuts. Now, omega-3s are known to decrease inflammation and may reduce the risk of acne and other skin problems. Next, we got vitamin C, which helps in the production of collagen, and prevents cells damage caused by free radicals. Now, great sources of vitamin C are oranges, pineapples, tomato, strawberries, and bell peppers. Though, if you do suffer from arthritis, you may want to avoid the tomatoes and bell peppers, which are actually nightshade vegetables. So if you notice that your inflammation increases, or you have more joint pain when consuming those, eliminate the nightshade vegetables. All right, next we have vitamin E, which helps limit sun damage and signs of aging. Almonds, for example, are a terrific source of vitamin E. Vitamin A revitalizes the skin by increasing cell production and helping in the rebuilding of tissue, right? You probably know that our skin constantly regenerates, right? We are shedding parts of it all day, just like we are losing, you know, single hairs all day. Everything renews. So supporting that renewal process is important. Vitamin A can be found in eggs and dark leafy greens. Next, we have beta carotene, which is needed for growth and repair of tissue. It is found in abundance in orange foods like carrots, sweet potatoes, pumpkin, and cantaloupe. Definitely some of my favorites right here. Now, other fabulous foods for boosting skin health are dark leafy vegetables, avocados, mushrooms, berries, and surprise, dark chocolate. Yep, I just had some before the live stream, 100%. Now, honestly, it takes a little getting used to, but 
it is still delicious and you know you're doing something good for your health. So please, can I just torture you and force you to eat some chocolate? <laughs> Dark chocolate, that is. All right. Also, if you would like more ideas and recipes on superfoods, if you haven't yet, make sure you listen to last week's episode, which was number three, where I cover superfoods in depth. All right. Number three for beautiful, vibrant skin, get plenty of sleep. Now, I can't tell you, I am shocked when on the rare occasion that I don't get enough sleep, I look in the mirror the next morning. I mean, I swear, I immediately look years older. I have like dark circles and even more wrinkles under my eyes. And my skin kind of lacks any color, looks kind of grayish. I mean, it is not a pretty sight. Well, it turns out that while you sleep, your body actually boosts blood flow to the skin, which means you wake up with a healthy glow. Now, if you have followed my hydration advice from earlier, the body also balances your hydration system while you sleep, sending the fluids, the water, <laughs> to the skin where it's needed to recover moisture while eliminating it from other areas where it's not needed. So hydration and good sleep basically go hand in hand. Also, when you don't get enough sleep and already have inflammation in your body, and again, if you suffer from arthritis, that is definitely the case, and or you have inflammatory skin conditions like eczema or psoriasis, these will likely get worse if you don't get enough sleep. And last but not least, if you don't get enough sleep, your body won't have the chance to perform the important repair and regenerative task on the damaged cells, which then will accelerate the aging process. So it's really important to regularly get seven to nine hours of sleep, experiment with the amount to see what leaves you refreshed and energetic the next day, because it differs on an individual level. Now, personally, for the last few years, I have found, well, actually for all my life, I've found that I am on the high end when it comes to sleep requirement. But what has been working well for me the last couple of years has been a very specific eight, three quarter hours of sleep. That's just ideal for me. And luckily, that's exactly what I got last night. Now, let's talk about your cosmetics and what's in them. Did you know that your skin is actually a breathing organ? It literally absorbs about 60% of what you apply topically. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll send it straight to your bloodstream. And scaringly enough, children absorb even more than that. So imagine that the products you've been using for years actually contain harmful ingredients and could damage your health. Now, if so, your first instinct would be to find a healthier alternative immediately, right? Well, did you also know that many cosmetic companies actually do not list their ingredients, aka toxic chemicals, because they are not required to do so? So several of these toxic chemicals are linked to a host of problems, which can include allergies, skin rashes, even cancer, headaches, fertility and reproductive issues, even birth defects, hormone inhibitors, and more. Now, I want to go over just some of the toxic chemicals that should be avoided. One, parabens, often found in deodorants and moisturizers. Parabens are hormone inhibitors, and they are also believed to accelerate tumor growth. Next, oh, one of my favorite pet peeves here, artificial fragrance and color. They may trigger allergies, as they do with me for sure. Asthma and some colors even contain lead and harmful dyes. Next, Tuline, which is found in nail polish, 
also hair color products and some fragrances, this chemical has been linked to kidney and liver damage, which may also affect fetal growth. Sodium lauryl sulfate, SLS, or sodium lauryl sulfate, SLES, is a foaming agent, which is found in shampoos and body or facial washes. It causes the skin to dry out and has also been linked to eczema, even hair loss, rashes, and dry and scaly skin, right? All these things that make your skin age faster. Formaldehyde is another toxin to avoid. It is used as a preservative, and it's actually known by several different names and should be avoided at all costs, as the side effects are numerous. Next, uh, PECs or PEGs are found in numerous skin and personal care products, and this is basically antifreeze. Okay, it belongs in your car, not on your skin. Also, widely used paraffin slash mineral oil, petroleum jelly, also known as uh, petrolatum, clogs the pores, which then in turn causes toxic buildup, right? Because your body can't release those toxins again. And next we have phthalates, which you hear a lot these days about uh, plastic products to avoid plastic bottles, plastic storage containers for your food. But when it comes to cosmetics, phthalates are often found in nail polish and hairspray, spray, and it is a known hormone disruptor. And next we have triclosan. It is used in antibacterial soaps and body washes, but also toothpaste and some other cosmetics. Now it is a pesticide. Yep, a pesticide. They put that in your skincare products. It is not only harmful to the environment and to you, but it is even a su suspected carcinogen. So it can cause cancer, with other words. And, of course, there are many more chemicals. I mean, hundreds, literally. You, you, you basically, you get the point, right? We have to do our research. We have to uh, look out for what's in our skincare products. And to make it simple, if you wouldn't eat it, if you wouldn't put it in your mouth, don't put it on your skin either. So finally, since this is such a, a vast amount of knowledge when it comes to these ingredients, I would like to share with you some resources so that you can gather more information about these dangerous or toxic ingredients. My favorite resource is the Environmental Working Group which you can find at ewg.org. Now, those are the folks that release the Dirty Dozen every year, uh, a, a list uh, that most of you are probably familiar with, uh, which, which vegetables and fruits to avoid because they're full of pesticides, etc. Now, the EWG has uh, specifically released a Skin Deep Guide to Cosmetics in which they actually rate 80,000, you heard that right, 80,000 personal care products. And that Skin Deep Guide to Cosmetics can be found at the ewg.org forward slash skin deep. So there you can simply go, you look at what products you have at home right now, you look them up and you see what's actually in them and what harm they can do. Now, of course, once you have done that, you will be looking for healthier alternatives when it comes to your skincare cosmetics. And here, also just giving you an example, one of my favorite local companies here in the Bay Area and a quite popular company, you may have heard of it, is uh, called Anne Marie. And they only sell organic skincare products that are chemical free. Now, you can find them either here at their local retail location in Berkeley, California, or online at annemariegianni.com. So that pretty much sums it up for today. If you enjoyed the show, please do share it on your favorite social media outlets. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, I know this has been a lot of information. And it's a lot to process at, at, at once, right? So as always, 
I recommend baby steps, right? To summarize, drink more water if you are not getting enough already. Same with your sleep. Make sure you regularly get good regenerative, you know, good quality sleep. Eat nutrient-rich foods. Again, you don't have to swap out everything at once. Just start adding the good stuff to your meals right now. And last but not least, talking about all these chemical products. And if you do the research, you may be in shock and you may be inclined to immediately throw all your things in the trash. And, you know, if, if you can afford it, I encourage it. But most people, that is unrealistic. So I suggest start becoming aware, do some research. And the next time you need to replace or restock your shampoo or your, your facial cream, whatever, that's when you go and grab the chemical-free product. All right. So I hope this was helpful. Please make sure to tune in next week when I'll be discussing steps to improve your digestion. You can find me either live at 11 a.m. Pacific on Tuesday mornings at thearthritiscoach.com forward slash live or Wednesday mornings after 4 a.m. Pacific in your favorite podcast app. So thank you so much. I'm glad you could join me today and I will see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.